Well, welcome back to the Radiant Ranks. I'm Kostar Ali, and today I am very, very, very excited for this video as it is a very special one across all the videos that we have made so far. But wait, why is it so special? As for the trailer that has happened in the last video that we posted on Thursday, for the very first time, a vet is coming on your channel to do a Q&A vet talk. Can you guys believe this? I honestly can believe it. <laughs> she has set her time, especially for this video, to answer all the questions that you viewers have. And I am very thankful for her and for you guys too, for sending in all your questions. Many, many questions to answer from the vet. And you will get very detailed answers too. And also, thank you for sending in the picture so we can get better visuals of your pets as well. Speaking of a vet, her name is Dr. Tasneem Bahrainwala. But we can call her Dr. Taz in during this video. And also, did you guys know that Dr. Tasneem Bahrainwala or Dr. Taz also turns out to be my aunt? Can you guys believe that? Yes, that means we have a vet in our family. Do you guys have any vets in your family? Okay, well let's get started with this amazing and very fun video. And once again, thank you so much to everybody, for you viewers for sending in the questions and for Dr. Taz for sending time for this video. So let's get started with the vet talk. Also everybody, please, please, please do not forget to like this video and share this video with your friends too so even they can see this amazing vet talk as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you do not, do not miss out on any future videos. Let's get started! So now coming to the main event, the vet talk. Woohoo! Woo yeah. This is Dr. Tasneem Zuzubaranwala, aka Dr. Tas. Say hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank very you. Good, How are thank you? you? Good, very good. I'm excited. Yes, we are also excited to have you on board. And you know, it's the first the time, time we're having this um, chat. And that too with a doctor, uh, animal doctor, yeah. and we've got like tons of questions from everyone Tossy, who subscribed, yeah. and even those who have not subscribed. <laughs> this so, is going to be my YouTube debut. Oh, is it? Oh, that's awesome. Wow. So we're going to make you a YouTube star, hopefully. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Hope. yeah, sure. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So what do you want to say, Kasi? So now let's start. Should we start with the questions now? Yeah, shoot. Okay. But yeah. before we start with the questions, everybody, I've got something to tell you about Dr. Tasneem Baranwala. So firstly, um, when she was becoming a animal doctor, a veterinarian, I have seen through all her years that she's really focused in her studies and does a lot of work day and night, even with the surgeries on animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, at night and day too, so she doesn't get much sleep at night and is always active at every time. So even I want to become like that, I will try, but that's in future times. And a very interesting fact, you know, that Dr. Taz happens to be Kosarali's aunt too. Yes. <laughs> so yes. Kosarali is quite yeah. excited to have her on board and she's happy to actually answer all the questions, share some fun facts. And yeah, let's see how we go. So let's get started with that. And thank you once yes. again. Thank you. So do you want to start asking the question? Yes. And so you can also say... I've got the questions say, on board here. Yep. And we'll tell them. Okay. All right. So the first question, I'm doctor... I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous for this. It's all right. Uh, okay. you, <laughs> takes time. Takes time. You are in the game. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep, yep. Disclaimer. Should I put a disclaimer? 
always yeah. go get <laughs> get a vet check done <laughs> for your animals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now let's come to the first question. Ready? Yes. The first okay. question is which mm-hmm. is the best pet to have and easy to look after? And who's asked the question? Well, Ethan and Alia have asked this question. Our neighbors. Ah, oh, very nice. Um good question. Um no easy way to answer this. Um excuse the background noise because Gus is pooping. Um right. <laughs> the best kind of pet to have it all basically comes down to what sort of lifestyle you have right how you live your life and what your daily schedule is do you do you spend a lot of time at home do you have time from your busy lives to actually look after um a pet that is um slightly time consuming to look after or needs a lot of attention so um maybe get a pet that you you know you might want a pet that you don't have to give a lot of attention to like a rabbit or a guinea pig or a bird you know something that you can have in a cage and you can just um you know obviously you need to provide basic food water um you know you need to clean up regularly after them and you need to make sure that they're in good healthy condition but with those sorts of animals you don't need to spend a lot of time with them so maybe that would fit better in your busy lives um or if you have you know a, a big backyard um or if you live next to a big um dog park then you can have a dog and if you're willing to put in the time and effort and make sure that you're exercising that dog regularly and you know making sure that he or she has enough enrichment then you can get a very active super happy super excited dog um and it wouldn't matter so it all comes down to what sort of lifestyle you have and how much time you can put and invest into that animal because it is something living it is something that needs care and it is dependent on you so you need to make sure that you are able to provide for that and that actually yeah that actually makes sense because that was the question that came up uh, at quite a regular interval from a lot of uh, viewers and a lot yeah. of kids because that's yeah. quite important you know like how much time and effort are you, are you ready to invest because you're yes. right it's also a living thing so you know i mean yeah you need to look like after it like raising another child Sorry. exactly exactly that's really good yeah that was a very very um good answer and thanks i think probably a lot of people have that in mind so i think it gives them a lot of yeah. perspective good. in terms of what to go for and you know how much time and effort is required in having a small you know animal to having a very large animal Uh, yeah depending on again yeah. you know your environment I mean, where you live exactly like yeah. i have cats but it's easy for me because they're not demanding i don't have to take them out for regular walks i don't have to um constantly be with them they're quite independent and they're happy to just be by themselves so obviously i have a lot of toys and a lot of enrichment and a lot of activities for them to do around the house but they're happy to be by themselves i don't have to invest a lot of time um i would love to get a dog but i just don't have the time to put um into training and grooming and you know um making sure that he's well looked after so what are your cats names for all of yours my cats names are gus and gilligan and we call gilligan gilly for sure yep. and your Okay doctor thank you for that information that was very helpful and also is a goldfish a good pet to have because i have heard in school also that a goldfish is a good pet to have because it is very easy to look after and i think i have yes. some other information too yeah no definitely um goldfish is a very easy to look after all you have to do is you have to make sure that you're cleaning the tank out or regularly and feeding it right but yes very very 
good first pet experience if you ever want to to have a a pet yeah that's yeah. awesome so i hope uh, ethan and his sister probably yeah. got an answer to the question and also a lot of other hope viewers who had the similar <clears throat> question so yeah. yeah handy handy tips from dr taz Thank so you. what's the next question let's Those move are some on good pets to to so, have Next question is uh, how do you keep your pet healthy and happy at all times like and like um like even when time. you're not there too and this was an anonymous question okay um you, you need a lot of things um there are a lot of ways we can keep our pets happy and healthy of course um first is proper food proper nutrition need good healthy food to make sure that your animals are nice and healthy and growing right um the other one is enough exercise training a lot of stimulation make sure that they are um enriched all the times regular health checks so a lot of visits to your uh, veterinarian um grooming them if they need grooming lots of socialization also especially for dogs um it's good to for them to go out and interact with other dogs and other people so that they learn how to behave themselves selves out in public and in other um situations outside of their home um and then make sure that you are also doing regular treatments for deworming and defleeing and um all of that so that's just their regular um treatments that they get um for dogs you you can make sure that um they're regularly walked and you can take them for walking running hiking swimming anything that people do and or whatever they pet parents are into they can go and do all sorts of outdoorsy stuff they love to fetch balls and sticks and all of that so that's a good way to keep them um happy and entertained um if you know if you are busy and or if you want to keep them busy at home there are a lot of few couple of tricks that you can do such as food mazes or hide their treats in small boxes and then hide those boxes around the house and that's interesting actually can, yeah the dogs can I'm go and sniff them out <laughs> yeah all sorts of games there heaps of mazes um that you can get online and um so dogs, dogs and cats both right i mean basically yeah, you can do yeah, the same yeah. with the cats yeah exactly oh. um and that sort of stimulates their brain and keeps them um sharp obviously but also when dogs use their nose they use a lot of uh, brain power so that can if you have a hyper active dog that is one um easy way to tire the pup i put dog oh right no. yeah. that's why we see a lot of you got a dog park nearby and i think we see a lot of dogs Very that are like really hyper active and some yeah. dogs are like not quite just lazy like, 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 just chill out yes so it's quite yeah they're interesting like to see to the owners and like they just like very um like kind of fun not no, they don't interact with yeah much. they don't want to like go, go at the dogs they just like do what the owner says technically and just walks with them yeah <laughs> yeah which is which is good behavior outside for the dog so yeah so actually it's a yeah it's a good tip to have that you know behavior versus having them active yeah exactly there's also agility like obstacle courses for dogs that some of the dog parks do have if you ever ever noticed some dogs park dog parks have the slides and um they have you know, slides tunnels. <gasps> yeah yeah the dogs go up and down and then there are tunnels and then there are hoops and um you know all sorts of different obstacles that they can They're like um human things and um do dogs do what humans can kind dogs of do, do monkey bars can dogs do what humans kind of do because like um we're talking about dogs and humans so far so can a dog do what human does and same as cats do or like not really but in what context like um yeah. remember, because you said um um doctor was talking about like um um hula hooping Oh, the hoops and, so, and everything. Yeah, like hula yeah. hooping and slides. So because yeah. they're like human activities, where like even a kid would go down a slide and play in the playground. Wow. I think 
I think there are heaps of videos on YouTube um Oh-ho. that dogs do, do 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 that and if you train them they'll obviously need a lot of training and a lot of patience to teach the dog that but I think if you can do it then yeah if you can teach the dog those sort of tricks then why not and, you know it's all it's good it's good fun for them and it's good stimulation for them and even for cats like the heaps of um mazes and tunnels and all sorts of games that you can play with cats as well and they love to chase the worn sticks and the balls Tons and all of that and the scratching pole yeah. exactly scratching so the cats and dogs kind of like do the same things and are like kind of similar in a way because like of these activities the hula hooping mm-hmm. and tunnels too like are they kind of similar in a way I mean like not similar like do exactly but like the games that they do like cats and dogs and yes, also the food too that they eat the food is slightly different but we get into that later but the in terms of Great activity question. yes if you can if you can um teach and train the cat um it's slightly difficult uh, personally um to <laughs> to train a cat than to train a dog if dogs are easier to train but if there are there are many people who do train their cats and you can definitely teach them oh, really? how to go through an agility obstacle course yeah because i've seen you know like uh, there are obviously these uh, training schools for dogs but are they like training schools for cats <laughs> No, I don't think so. Training schools? Yeah, there are training schools for dogs. They actually graduate yeah, from the school. Dogs. Yeah. Dude, that is that is kind of funny. Dogs go to puppy preschool and yeah. a lot of obedience <laughs> training. <laughs> oh my god. That's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> dogs <laughs> learn how to cat. So, are they learned how to train them like properly? Yeah. Sorry? Are they learned how to train them properly like they learn yeah exactly like a school like maths and all that but no, they no, learn yeah they were dog way yeah and <laughs> the, the special training for like guide dogs and police dogs and all of that so yes yeah. oh that's that's um, that's good. that actually actually leads to the question that's the next question which is come from uh, ali and uh, in india in india yeah and he's asked about okay. food so food obviously even i had a question and even his question so his was is so home food recommended, recommended for the for pets? pets and also i wanted to check out with you that you know the food that we get in the supermarkets like how um, you know good is that for the pets in terms of nutrition etc and how do you kind of figure out what to buy because there are obviously lots of varieties like how we find uh-huh. like milk has many varieties same way cat food has many varieties and dog food has many varieties but how do you know which one is good for your pet yeah so in terms of home food like obviously no human food like whatever we eat please do not give your pets that um okay. but if you want to cook their own food like if you want to specifically cook food for your dogs and cats yes that can be done however you have to do it right so i would strongly recommend that if someone is willing to do that and is interested um to cook meals for their dogs and cats i would highly highly recommend that they um consult a veterinary nutritionist um mm-hmm. to do that and someone who can help them plan a proper dietary course for that animal right so from all for sorts of life week? stages yeah sorry for the whole week like um no for, for the whole life all sort of life stages what yeah, right from their baby ah, to they so grow you, old so like you can cook what meal meal to you do try and repeat that yeah so you cook the same meals the yeah. 365 times you're going to write each meal for the day <laughs> not really but uh, probably no. if but i can summarize for to... him yeah it's yeah. basically you know they have each year plan and then obviously you know, as they grow they need more nutrition like how you need more nutrition as you're growing right 
No, yeah, like more food because exactly, you, exactly. Well, grow older, so, you're growing boy, you're growing child. Exactly. So, as a puppy, for example, a puppy is still growing, so he's going to need more calcium and more proteins and more um, healthy fats. But a already grown dog is not going to need as much of those, and it's just going to be on a maintenance diet for the rest yeah. of his life. Yeah. Or later on, as a geriatric dog or a very old senior patient, he might, he or she might have some sort of a chronic disease. So it, he or she might have a kidney problem, or I don't know, pick a problem, or a liver problem, or something. And mm-hmm. the food that you're giving as an adult is or a puppy is probably not going to suit that older dog. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you're giving them the right sorts awesome. of food. And food, which Kosarani should know, food is very, very important. You have to get the right amount and specific vitamins and minerals into your diet. So you have to make sure that you're, you're eating right. older and older and need more food. <clears throat> like because you when that, you're a baby, you, you just like pie. need remember? milk, but then otherwise you need like like proper, like you have the pie, remember, which says like, how many vitamins, how many, you know, yeah. like, oh, no. also, oh, the, the pyramid, the food pyramid, the food pyramid, yeah. yeah. Also, yes. doctor, um, um, for the, for the pyramid, can you also do the same for your like a uh, pet, like where you cook the meals and sort out which, um, like which place does the food go in in the pyramid and see whether you can give your pet that food or not? That yes, food? you can. There are some foods that you absolutely cannot give dogs and cats. And there are some only some sort of foods that you can give dogs and cats. So, yeah. yes, if you want, it is very time consuming. But if you want to cook meals you for your pet, yeah, pets, you can. But I, I personally buy the already processed and made foods um so it's already ready made it's already done all the ingredients are calculated out and measured so i don't have to think about all of that and i don't have to think about okay my cat needs so many percentage that much percentage of fat and that much percentage of carbohydrates i can just follow the nutritional label and feed that much amount it's very important actually to give them the right nutrition yeah that's right yeah oh like great answer protein, but dogs don't need it so yes yes so, now that's that's really good helpful yeah. and uh, i think it will be really uh, worth noting to all our viewers that you need to take care of what you yeah. feed your pets and that's how much right. you feed Yes, definitely. All right, great. Thank you so, so much. Um, also, do dogs do um dogs and I'm um, yeah do dogs and cats like eat only treats or like do they eat like because the cat food when you get it like um is there different cat food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner or just the same thing each day? No, That's a it's pretty question. much. <laughs> no, it's pretty much the same. They're not. Um, that the, their food is slightly different, so it doesn't work like cereals for breakfast and, you know, um, sandwiches lunch. for lunch or chicken and veggies for dinner. It does not work like that. It's the same sort of food. And you can feed your animals just once a day or twice a day or three times a day, depending on however the your lifestyle is. But, yeah, it's, it's not... Uh, divided as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, and so you're saying you can give them any time? Yes, as long as it is the right amount that they need throughout a 24 hour period. Right amount and right nutrients, right time. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. So now let's move on to the next question. Yes, sir. Uh, Now coming to the next question, Doctor. Who is more lazier, a cat or a dog? It's <laughs> a very a interesting question. A cat? I'm going to say cats. I have two it's cats so and they, they are constantly sleeping. They have these short bursts, bursts of energy and then they sleep for the next two hours. 
So how much time do they sleep in a day? <laughs> they probably sleep around, well, I know they definitely sleep more than I do. And I'm not here most of the day, so I don't know, but I'm assuming they're sleeping. So yeah, I would say definitely more than 12 hours a day. Wow, Whoa. that's interesting. Even I'm, even they are lucky. I know, they are very lucky. No, so lucky, lucky. lucky. So the cats do have nine lives? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Uh, we have a um, cat who was bitten by a snake a few times. So oh, she survived. So I'm going to say based on her, um, that cats probably do have nine lives. So it's really? factual that they have. Was it sure? She died. Was reborn. <laughs> Sorry. She died. What? What was reborn into her? No, not died, but she was no, very badly she was saved a couple yeah. of times. She was saved. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that question. Now, next one. How do I train a dog and what are the tips to train it? This was by Shramant, my old school friend. Oh, wow. Um, I cannot answer that question in one sentence. That you will probably need another one hour video on that. <laughs> um, it's a very, very complex question. Um Firstly, I would say maybe send the puppy or take your puppy to a puppy preschool um, or a dog trainer who can help and guide you through it because it's a very, it's 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 a complex um, activity for a dog and it, you need to understand body language of the dog. Um, training a dog takes a lot of consistency patience and daily training so you you need to be uh, very patient um, you can't train a dog in one day and you can't think that after one day one it knows everything it does not it's a constant learning process for them just like us we learn new things every day um, so does the dog um, true. but the mainstay of training a dog um is basically positive reinforcement um i i I like positive reinforcement um it it what it means is that you reward the dog or give something he likes straight after he's done the activity that you wanted him to do so if you are positively reinforcing that you you are rewarding the dog for that action then there's a higher chance that the action will be repeated again or multiple times over and over again so every time you get the reward yeah absolutely exactly it's just like you Kasi if you do something right then and you get a reward for it you'll be more motivated to do it again so it's kind of like a trading like you do something I give you something for it do it again I give you the treat yeah but the better you do it's more reward for you right so you're the better good you do and better progress you have you know, the you better get, you do at school, the yeah. higher marks you get, the more motivated you are to keep studying. So Yeah, true. Same thing. So that's the same thing but except in puppy version. Yes, puppy. exactly. Yep. Yeah. So that actually brings us to the next question, which is uh, quite interesting, but also uh So great insights, uh, definitely on uh, the dogs and cats. So great insights, uh, definitely on uh, the dogs and cats. Um, the next question animals? obviously has come from Pasarali's old school friend again, uh, Eva. Eva. Thanks for the question. And as you can see that, you know, it's a lovely dog. Uh, the name yeah. is Milo. Milo. And Yui. what breed is that, doctor? Mm, looks like a poodle cross. Poodle cross. Poodle cross with something. All right. So, what's the question, Eva? So, based on this photo, amazing photo of her dog, yeah. the question is: Why does my dog whine while traveling in a car? Hmm. Interesting. Always whines the car. 
Yeah. Um, the, is the picture of him sitting in the car? Yes. Yeah, because I yeah. Uh, with the seat belt, I think it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he also looks a little drooly in his on it in his mouth as well. Um, hmm. again, a very complex question, and I probably I'm not answering her correctly or in entirely. Um, she might want to get in touch with me after this. <laughs> so um, you have to take notice. <laughs> yes. Um. There's lots of information online as well, but um, she definitely um, would probably benefit from a conversation with a veterinarian. Um, it is a problem that a lot of dogs have. Um, it's some dogs can have travel or car anxiety, um, and you know that can manifest itself as constant whining or drooling, even sometimes throwing up and spewing everywhere or just constant shaking as well. Um, tips on what to do, a um, gazillion things. You can do heaps and heaps of things. Um, what I usually, um, yeah. sorry? No, it's like gazillion, I'm like many. <laughs> many, many, yes. Um, Many ways to deal with this or approach this. Um, one of the easiest things I tell people is um, get your dog used to the car. So go for a two minute drive. Then the next day, go for a five minute drive. And then the third day, maybe extend it and then gradually extend that time period. Get your dog comfortable um, in the car. Um, you can play uh, soft, soothing music. Make sure the temperature is right. Um, sometimes exercising the dog um, before putting them in the car is also a good idea because they're so exhausted uh, from the, ex uh, the exercise or the activity. And that activity also releases endorphins. So the endorphins help calm them down as well. So... That would be one way to do go about this. Um, the other is, you know, um, make sure that he understands that he's actually going to, or the destination where they're headed is actually a good place to be at. So he's not anxious the entire yeah. way. So he might have had a bad experience at the vet, for example. And he yeah. thinks every time he sits in the car, he's going to go to the clinic and get jabbed or some something like that or have a thermometer stuck up his bum or something. So he's he so you need, he, you need to make sure that he knows that it's a fun destination. You know, the 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 short trips that you're going um, taking him with you wherever you're going is um, it's coming back home you know that that, that it's a circle they're yeah, going somewhere okay. but if it. they come back home yeah and then if that doesn't work um you can also if your dog is crate trained you can also take the crate put the dog in the crate and take that entire crate with you and make sure that your dog is contained in a crate and make sure that the dog is has a car harness and is buckled in so that he's yeah. not um, anxious about the movement of the car. And then there's also heaps of other things like pheromones and anti-anxiety stuff that you can give your dog, but um, she'll have to really speak to a veterinarian <laughs> for that. So she That's... needs to... Get in touch with me or her local veterinarian, her regular veterinarian. Oh, okay. Yeah, makes sense. So actually, actually, that actually leads a question that I have probably, and I don't know if there's an answer to it. But are animals also autistic? Do you know? Can you gauge that or no? Because mm -hmm. as you mentioned that you know, I mean, they also obviously have that whining and you know that shaking, whatever. You know, sometimes sometimes they have a sensory a issue. But do they also have that, or is it just restricted to humans? Mm, don't, uh, I can't answer that. Okay. Um, That's fair enough. I don't know. But yes, Tricky. dogs do get anxious. <laughs> they, they can be a little sensitive. And yeah. anxiety, they can be anxious about 
the smallest of things to the biggest of things. The spectrum is quite varied. So they can be anxious about a simple car drive, a five minute car drive, or they can be anxious about thunderstorms or fireworks. Um, they, they are not, well, in, in the wild, they, they, if the dog wasn't domesticated, a um, million years ago, they, they didn't have fireworks then or they didn't have car drives. So it, over time, the dog has been domesticated and all these things have come into the environment and they're being overstimulated. So maybe that is having some sort of an effect, but I am not the right person to answer that okay. question. So we might oh, have to edit <laughs> <laughs> so hope Eva got her questions to this one. Um, why does the dog whine in the, the car? <laughs> yeah, answers to the questions. And also, Eva, make sure to do get in touch with Dr. Taz just in case you want yeah. some more because she said that um do get in touch with me. So yeah. Yeah, if you wish to, definitely. Yeah, if you wish to. Or you can just um go to your local pet, like Doctor said. Like a local, local vet. veterinarian. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely are at a very exciting stage, Dr. Taz, because we've got now heaps of questions on a oh, variety yeah. of pets. Yes, so we've uh -huh. just actually focused on dogs and cats, but we're getting we so many questions about different, you know, variety of animals yeah. where people have as pets already or planning to, uh -huh. you know, buy as pets or just general animal questions. So yeah, Curious. surely it's getting exciting. It's getting interesting, but I think mm -hmm. next question, Le, I'll probably ask uh, Kosi to ask you. So coming um, on to the seventh question, <clears throat> that is, why do, why do dogs' hair fall in two to three months of age? And this question is from Nalina. Nalini. Nalini. So Nalini is one of my friends and she's uh, just recently got a uh, dog. As they you can see Milo. in the picture, you know, the dog oh, yeah. is no, uh, Milo. Cute Another eyes. Milo. Yes. Yes, I know. Milo is a very good name. And I think it's a Labrador, a black Labrador. So yeah. that's the question from her um, and her yeah. kids. So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, the question was, why does dog hair fall in two to three months of his age? Mm, I, I don't think they lose hair like the fur does not actually come out but it is possible that they're just shedding their puppy coat or okay. they're shedding like is is there a change in season have they like um just come out of winter so they're shedding their winter coat um but they don't really lose hair at that age um not specifically at that age um it's probably just a general change in coat. Oh. Or is it something like medical that, you know, that needs to be further it investigated? Could be. It could be. They could have um, external parasites on their skin or something like that. Um, but it is, it, they what? need to sort of figure out, is it patchy or is it generalized or is it just um, constant, uh, like just tufts of fur coming out or is it just like when you pat the dog, a, a couple of hairs are coming out. So they just need to figure that bit out. But they can't, I can't give you a specific answer. Sorry. So that actually, actually brings to the second uh, question that mm -hmm. has been asked about when wow. they're out with the dog, uh, you know, the dog obviously sniffs a lot of poop, poop and, and urine of other dogs. And yeah. is it reluctant to move out from there or will he be prone to the infection? But what does prone mean? Like, will they will they get the infection? So, will they get the infection of the other poop and urine? Of other dogs. I think that's what we're saying. Hello? Am I smelling on the poop? We'll, uh, we'll let the wet talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's actually a very natural thing for dogs and cats to sniff other dogs and cats' poos and wheeze. Um, they when dog when dogs and cats poo or we they um release or leave behind um something known as pheromones, 
um, in 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 their droppings. So um, in the wild, they, that's how they mark their territory. So when um, or if your dog is sniffing, it's it's okay. It's a natural behavior. Um, in terms of prone to infections. As long as you are staying on top of regular deworming, um, he should be all right. Um, and yeah, if, if your dog's happy and eating right, um, eating, drinking, pooping, weeing right, um, something that in our world we call EDDU, um, eating, drinking, defecating, and urinating well, then I sh there's no cause. Should be all right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So then there's That's one more question. last question that uh, yeah. she's asked for, the, um, from for the, Milo. And it's actually, um, they oh, don't... Labradors don't yeah. bark when they are small? Or is it just an ex exception, exception or they st start barking? Like, so oh, wow. You, Nalini, is that her name? Nalini, Nalini yes. She is extremely lucky if she has a Labrador that does not bark because they are one of the more boisterous and super friendly and super active dog breeds and they're constantly getting into trouble. So if he's not barking, it's actually a good thing. You don't want a very noisy dog in your house anyways. But it also depends on how old the dog is and how when she got the dog so if it's a young puppy um maybe he's just trying to settle in get his bearings and trying to figure out what's going on where is he who are these new people this is a new house you have to think that this puppy has gone from being with his mother and his siblings lots of brothers and sisters and he's come out of that environment into a completely new home. Um, yeah. So maybe she needs to just give him some time to open up, get comfortable, get on his four feet and figure things out. Um, it is possible he's having an off day um, or he's unhappy about something. And if that's the case, she's probably, she should probably go get it wet checked. But if he's a happy puppy, if he's happy in himself, um, not barking is probably a blessing. Um, I'm sure she doesn't want her neighbors knocking on her door at two o'clock in the night and complaining about this dog barking at random things. So Yeah, totally. That would be so annoying. Yes, I know. It's like waking up at 2 a.m. Yeah. And yes. going to the door. Yes. Oh, that's great. Uh, it's actually yeah. a good thing. <laughs> great yeah. insights. Yeah, I but hope. But don't dogs usually bark naturally? Well, they, do. Just... they do. They oh, do. Yeah. Oh, so, oh. Yeah. If they if they see something of the if they're a guard dog or it could also be a welcome bark, you know, someone new has come home, or they want something, or they just want to play. It's a um, get out of the couch, dad. Let's go for a walk, sort of a bark, or let's play fetch, sort of a bark, or yeah. I want food and he's barking. Or there's something wrong and he's barking. So it could be... That Lots of things, yeah. Age, so it could be anything and everything. But, yeah, if if he's a, just a young pup, maybe she should just give him some time to figure things out. And, uh, you know... Yep. Yep, figure Just let the dog out. be. Because, like, yeah. being new in a <laughs> school, like, time. you wouldn't just, like... Just start like going and talking yes, to anybody. Exactly. Like you were just like yeah. because even when I moved to my first school, I was like very nervous of what to do. Like because there are many other classmates. So, exactly. So that's like that's exactly. a very good example. No, but great insights. Thank you, uh, Nalini. Definitely, okay. well, you got you, some answers to your questions. And I yeah, you. take I take hope care. Everyone did. And hope everyone did. So Eva, Sriman, everyone, did, and who everyone. Who wanted their questions. So interesting. Uh, yes, and, interesting insights. And if they want to know more, they can obviously they or they should definitely speak to their veterinarian or they can email Kossi with follow up yeah. questions and he can pass them on to me. Yes. Yeah, totally. Cool. So we got like now tons of questions that we've actually undergone 
uh, answering. Yeah. Really great. Uh, I'm not sure if you have more time or are you like are you busy? busy? Or no, unfortunately, I have to go check in on a dog at the clinic. So I'm oh, okay, run. all right. Surgery. So dog? yeah, I mean, probably very interesting uh, conversation over the past so many minutes. Thank you for all the answers. For That's people right. who, for our viewers whose questions have not been answered, don't be disappointed. We'll really request right. Dr. Taz to probably come oh back my. again on our channel yeah. and probably do a part two. Okay. I don't know, oh, part yeah. three. So oh it's all surprise. But yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you once again for, uh, you know, coming on live with us, having this chat, answering questions. Thank you for you know, having like, me. For all the viewers. Yes. Thank you so much. And Kossi, what do you want to say? Thank, Thank you, you so much, Doctor, for coming with us. Was it fun? It was heaps of fun. Thank you for having me. Thank no. you for all your questions. Thank you for to all your viewers for their questions. And I hope I have, you know, this little tiny bit able and to thank help you for them and your answer time them. Side. Yeah. Thank, thank you for right. coming, especially for this video, for all the viewers and subscribers to answer their question yeah. for animals. Thank you. Thank and you. And Dr. Taz, do you want to actually give the end line for all the viewers? Don't end line. To like, share, um, and subscribe to our channel. Oh, I should say that. Yes. All right. Hey, 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 hey. What is up? No, that's just starting the ending. No, oh, that's all right. We that's all right. That's fine. <laughs> um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's the ending. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Radiant Ranks. Woo! All right. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Take care. Hit um, the little notification bell so you get a notification when our videos are posted out on YouTube. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. We shall. All right. This. Thank you so much for your time. Speak soon. Bye. 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 Thank you everybody so much for watching today's video. And also don't feel disappointed if your question hasn't been answered in today's video. Because in the next one, hopefully we'll get Dr. Tasneem to do well sort of a part two for the other questions that haven't been answered in today's part. Please, please, please do not forget to like and share this video. And as well as definitely subscribe to our channel so you do not miss out on any future videos. And also don't forget to hit that little notification bell. We didn't expect all of you guys to ask so many questions. But again, that is very good. So we have many questions about pets to answer and all that even I haven't known before and what the right questions to ask. So that is very good. Thank you everybody so much once again. See you in the next part, hopefully. Bye.